but I use ClickUp for my homeschool planning. So the first thing you need to do is create your space. So you're gonna click Add New, select Space, enter the name, click Next. This is where you're going to set up your avatar. So you can upload your own image or select an icon from here and a color. If you plan to share your workspace, you'll want to select this option. If you're like me and you don't need to share your workspace, then you can select private. This is where you are going to set up your task statuses. So by default, this very first status is always going to be the first one in your list or board view. And I can change the name of that and change it to planner. You could also change the color by clicking on these three dots. And I can enter more. And I always enter all of my statuses first, and then I go back and change any colors if needed. So I'll go and change some of these colors. Oops. And green. So I organize my statuses by curriculum and subjects. I like to be able to see everything that we need to get done under one status. You could also set it up by days of the week if that works better for you. And I'll go ahead and just add a couple here. Now this status down here, this is the closed status. Every time you mark a list or task complete, it will automatically transfer to this closed status. I really like this feature because when I finish a unit study from one of our subjects or curriculums, I don't have to move it any place. All I have to do is mark it complete and it automatically moves and I can visually see what we have left. You can't change the color, but you can change the name, so we'll go ahead and do that. And this is where you will select your click apps. I don't use most of these, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the ones I'm not using. I haven't used custom fields, but I always keep it selected just in case I find a need for them. I do use tags. This is your view options. You will always have the list view. I use the board view and I use the calendar view. And then just make sure everything looks good here and create your space. So here you have your list view. And up here, if you already have some spaces created, you can inherit the same settings. And if you wanna do that, you just click here and you choose what you want to inherit and the space you want to use and then click apply. But we're not gonna do that here. Now notice how you can't see any of your other statuses. ClickUp automatically hides any empty statuses. So you can change that under show and select show empty statuses. And now here's everything that was created. And I'm going to switch to board view since this is the view that I use. So here is your board view. And if you want to enter a new status, you would just click on add status, enter the name and choose the color. Now to enter a new task, you would click on new task, type the name and hit the return key. And you can just keep doing that and adding as many new tasks as you would like. When I'm setting up a curriculum, typically what I'll do is I'll go ahead and enter the weekly topics all at once, and then I will go back into the task and I will enter all the details. So I'm going to show you how I create a unit study. So I'm going to enter our new tasks and I'm going to enter spring and click save. So here is where I'm going to enter all of the information I need for this unit study. And here is where your status is located. If you accidentally enter it into the wrong status, you can also change it by clicking this arrow or clicking on the status and selecting from the dropdown. You can set a due date for the entire unit study. You can add tags. And here's where you can add some descriptions or notes that you want to be able to see. Here are your subtasks. You also have a checklist and you can add attachments. Click add, you can upload PDFs, images, you can import from Dropbox or Google Drive. I typically just drag and drop 
So I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. And I will add my cover image. And this is what your cover will look like. And you can also add a PDF, which I'll go ahead and do. So depending on the size of the PDF, it can take a couple minutes to upload. I enter everything under subtasks, any books we're gonna read, any videos we're gonna watch, or any activities we're gonna do. And I like to utilize copy and paste. So if I'm gonna enter a lot of books from a curriculum, I'll open that PDF and I'll just copy and paste them into the subtasks. And I'll show you how I do that. I use Notability for my curriculums. And I'm gonna just go in here and Command C. And then I'll go back over here and Command V or Control if you use a PC. I do the same with videos, Command C. I also like to have the title of any videos we're gonna watch, so I'm also gonna copy that right in front. And let's just say we're gonna plant wildflowers. And this is where I utilize tags. I like to be able to filter what we're gonna read for a week or what videos we're gonna watch or activities we're gonna do within a week. And I created tags, read, video, and activity. So to add a tag, you just go to these three dots and go down to tags and you select your tag. And this is a book, so I will click read. And then you'll do the same for video and the same for activity. And to add a tag, a new tag, you go back over to tags and just, just enter, I'll enter new, enter. And you can add more than one tag. And if you need to delete a tag, you just hover over that tag and click the X. And I also like to add due dates. So if you go to the three dots and go down to set due date, and you can also set a time I don't set a time since we don't have a scheduled day, so I just like to have a list of everything I want to do that day. And we'll go over here, set another one. When you add a subtask, it automatically defaults to that first status. So if you want to change this, just click here and scroll down to the correct status. Or if you wanna change them all at once, you just click this circle next to subtasks, and this pop-up comes up where you can make changes to more than one subtask. So I'm gonna to go to status, and I'm gonna change it to science. You can also add a tag to all three. If I'm entering multiple books, I usually will not add the tag from here. I'll wait till the end, and I'll go ahead and check them all, and I'll add the tag from here. You can also set the due date for all of them to be the same. And to uncheck these, you just click Dismiss. Another thing I really like about subtasks is I can click on one of these and it basically brings up its own file. So I can add any notes for this activity that I might need. I can add a checklist. Let's say I need to do some shopping. So I'm gonna add by soil buy seeds. I can also add multiple checklists so that I can group them. Let's say I need to prepare activity. We'll just put that and then I can name these a different name. We'll put shopping and here we'll put to do. And then you can just check them off as you do them. And if you wanna see the completed, you just click here and you'll be able to see them. You can also add attachments. I'll go ahead and add one. Let's close this. Let's say I wanna add a PDF with the directions or just an image of what we're gonna be doing. I can add that within this subtask. And to return to your previous screen, you wanna click your task name here. And this also has a checklist that works the same way. And the thing to know about checklists is, let's go ahead and add something, by soil. 
you cannot add due dates to a checklist. You can only add due dates to the subtasks. Now, I typically put my checklist in the description. If you click here and you click this icon, you have several different options here. So I'm going to click checklist and enter those one more time. And then I can just click them from here. Let's go ahead and open this PDF. So here is your PDF. And if you want to go to the next file, you would just click this arrow. Then you can go back. When you've completed this unit study, all you need to do is click this check mark. And it will automatically move to your completed or done status. I really like this feature because if I have all of our weeks set up here under science, as I complete them, it automatically moves and I don't need to drag and drop them anywhere and I'm able to visually see what I have left. You can also move your tasks to another status and I'm going to put it back here so I can show you a couple other things. If you want to just quickly see what subtasks you have entered, all you have to do is just click this box right here and you're able to see what you have for this task. You can also add a subtask by clicking here. You can also set a due date for this entire unit study by clicking on the calendar. And you can also check it complete from here by clicking this check mark. And now it's moved to the done status. Now you can keep all of your closed unit studies here, or you could even create a separate space to save those. To move them, all you have to do is click these three dots, select move, and I'll just select curriculums to show you. And this will pop up and ask you where you want to move it. So this is the statuses that I have in curric in my under my curriculum status. So you would just select one of these. So now I'm going to show you the calendar view. And as you can see, those subtasks that we set due dates for, they're not on the calendar. So the first thing you want to do, you want to click on these three buttons and you want to select auto save view so that any changes you make to your calendar view will save. If you don't select auto save, once you exit calendar and you go back in, it'll default to this view. So now you want all of your subtasks to be viewable. So you're going to go over to settings and you're going to set show subtasks. And here are your subtasks. Another nice feature is if you have other workspaces with subtasks and due dates, you can view them all. Just go to settings and select show my tasks from all list. So now I'm able to see all the tasks I have in first grade. And I'll go ahead and close that. And then you can also view it by week and view it by day, which I have nothing set for today, so I'll go back to week. And notice how it has this time grid. Since I don't set times to my unit studies, I want to get rid of this time grid here. And to do that, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to scroll down to show our grid lines and I'm going to turn that off. And now I will just have a list and I can also move and change the due dates just by dragging and dropping. There are other features that I like to do within the calendar. I like to print from the calendar. I like to filter by tags, but I will do a separate video with how I use the calendar. So this was just a quick overview with how I use ClickUp for my homeschool planning, but there are many more features within ClickUp, and I'm sure you're going to discover more the more you use it. I hope that this video was helpful to at least get you started.